much fun so this is nicer and also um, some things have changed for you yeah so let's just uh, let's just recap so tell us what is it that you do I am a portrait photographer and I specialize in photographing women so technically it's called contemporary glamour what that means is we have the hair and makeup artist who comes into the studio so we don't just do the photos we do a full photo shoot experience it's like being a model for a day you can get dressed up in beautiful gowns jeans and t-shirt you name it we can do a whole variety of styles and it's really making you feel beautiful mm. or handsome um, <laughs> and creating photos of yourself that you love because there are so many photos of ourselves out there that we don't like so it's time everyone had photos of themselves they did yeah i've seen some photos of myself and gone Oof, why did anyone bring a camera to that party so um but you you, you also have photographed um a few blokes recently right yeah, definitely. Um, often they are husbands or partners that come along with the ladies and we spend all the time with ladies, but I also do business headshots, so I do businessmen in that sense as well. Um, and guys have a similar fear to women or an intimidation in terms of when they get in front of the camera. Really? Yep. It's the same thing. Every, every, not every. When most people see a photo of themselves, they don't like themselves in the photograph. Not that they don't like the photograph as an object. Right. And it's uh, people tend to reflect on themselves and think that they're not adequate, they're not good enough, they're not macho enough, they're not staunch enough, they're not slim enough, they're not masculine enough, whatever, or feminine, depends on the way it is. And so where a woman won't want to see the photo of themselves, mm. once it's taken, a guy won't want the experience to happen because of the same outcome of not wanting to see that photo. So how do you get around that? Move quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sara Lee the Flash. <laughs> Almost, not quite. I try to make it as casual as possible. Tell them um, I'm not there to put pressure on them, so there's no expectations for them to act anyway. A lot of guys, when they sit down in a relaxed position, they'll actually strike a really flattering pose anyway. So I don't have to, to direct them or pose them heavily, which so they don't want because it'll feel fake. Yeah, so yeah. you just you just wait and catch them doing it right. Pretty much. I'll sit there and I'll watch how they sit down, what's comfortable to them, and then I'll say stop don't move or go back to where you were or you looked really good from that angle and then just little tweaks just to get a little bit more flattering often with the angle of the head mm. um, and then run from there so if it's fast and it's easy you keep the attention they don't get bored like most people you don't want it to drag on and on and on it wants to be there and done and you want an outcome that you're happy with so how long would trial. you how long would you spend trying to photograph someone and trying to capture that moment um, so a, photo, a full photo shoot is up to three hours long, including the hair and makeup. But if you're talking about a but in, single in a, picture, yeah, so, so they're in an outfit, yep. and you're trying to capture the best of that outfit, them in that outfit. How long would that normally take? Um, to get the exact look I want, it may take five minutes. It may take fifteen. Mm. It really depends on how well I can convey what I'm trying to get out of them. So it's a real exercise in there. communication. It's not just click, click, you actually... No, I've spent a lot of time, especially since I started the business about two and a half years ago, I've spent a huge amount of time researching posing. And I call it directing rather than posing because mm. posing comes with a whole lot of connotations. As a word, I don't want to put people in a pose and have them yeah, look like their make, pose. Yeah, you can make them feel awkward. Eh? So you're posing and it's awkward. Yeah, yeah. So I talk about directing them um, and directing them them down to the last eyelash, so I'll, I'll talk a person how to, through how to smile, because there's lots really? of different... Yeah. <laughs> Come on, give me a smile. Come on, give, me a, give me a smile as you would as if you were getting a photograph. No, 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 no. You're no. putting me on pressure now. Oh, <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, I do that because a lot of people, when they get a camera in front of them, they'll feel awkward and it comes mm. across in a smile, or they'll feel intimidated, or they'll feel scared, and... A lot of people have the exact same smile in every single photograph and they've never seen themselves as a slightly different expression. And there's, I've even gone as far as to try and understand micro expressions, like a, a fraction of a millimeter will change how you interpret someone's expression in a photograph. Oh. So there's a lot of little things that I focus on that um, will subconsciously make that person like their photograph a lot more, even though they don't know why. Ah, yeah. so. How did you get into this? Because it's it's a lot more technical than I even thought it was. You know, I, I thought I I was thinking, you know, lighting, camera, 
Um, I wasn't thinking about the direction and the communication that was mm -hmm. a biggie and how there's micro, micro changes that can change the way they'll react to the photo when they see it. Yeah. How, I mean, how did you get to learn all this stuff? How did you... I have been studying other photographers. There's one or two people who I really look up to who um, who have been named top portrait photographers in the world for the last couple of years. And so they put out a lot of information for other photographers um, in terms of online workshops, videos, blogs, all that sort of information and just tapping into what they know as well as um, going through different magazines and looking through and seeing a similarity between the photographs in terms of their poses or the way they've been directed and a model's job is to know how to move their body, how to move their expression and like they can know up to 35 or 40 different ways to smile. So if I can go through and figure out um, what that smile says, mm. then how do you do it? So I'll, yeah, <laughs> I'll go in front of the mirror. You're not working. Yeah. Oh, so you learn. Do a lot of mirror work. So I go in front of the mirror and understand what that feels like. Wow. As strange as that sounds, what that, that particular look feels like, what it looks like, ever am I actually achieving what I try to do and then try and vocalise that and communicate that sort of look through to Yeah, because you're not else. talking to a trained model, you're helping someone uh, who's An everyday not person, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, models know that that's because it's part of their career, it's part of what their job entails, whereas the everyday person doesn't. So it's my job to help oh. them learn that sort of thing. Um, and it isn't always easy, and some people are more natural with one style than the other, so it's just a matter of working with um, them to get the best side of them to come out. Yeah. So that's over and above uh, just the qualifications and experience with the camera, isn't it? That's, that's something completely, that's getting people to look their best. Yeah. So you do that, you've sort of kind of got the self-imposed training regimen that, that, that helps you improve and improve and improve at communicating and understanding what you're trying to communicate which is the effect you're trying to create with their yeah. expression, uh, how to get them to do that. But then you've also studied uh, as a, as a you know, the photography and the lighting as well. So what was what was that study? I have I completed a diploma of contemporary photography from UTEC in Auckland in 2007, 2008. And that was very much technically based. So everything from the big old film cameras where you put the hood over your head. Really? Uh, yep, yeah, I know how to work one of those. <laughs> They're awesome, all the way through to yeah, advanced darkroom, advanced Photoshop. Um, I learned a little bit of HTML in terms of web design, which um, <laughs> I promptly decided I didn't want to continue because web's a whole nother monster. Um, it credits the people that take it on. Um, but yeah, but when it came to directing people, portraiture wasn't a big factor. It was very much based towards the commercial side of photography and working with art directors and working with big magazines and with um, international ad agencies. and definitely working at more of the creative perfectionist of one perfect image for mm. an ad campaign, whereas mm. what I wanted to do was work with people and provide a whole lot of different looks to them, and I wanted to do portraits rather than fashion because I liked the side of it that involved confidence about making people feel good about themselves, of actually changing someone, not to sound high and mighty, but to change someone's life, even mm. if in a small way that they, you know, like their, themselves a bit more because they like their photographs. And and there's magic in what you do because some of the biggest performance experts in the world, that's what they do. They find a time when the person was succeeding mm. and they try and get them to feel that way. Yeah. And they start succeeding again and that's kind of, you're reigniting that fire for some people. You're actually helping with their confidence, helping them move forward. Um, your work has kind of some quite good consequences for people. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you didn't just do the technical photography, lighting, and all that kind of qualification. You've gone on and trained yourself more in uh, facial expressions and uh, how to how to position the body to get it looking its best and how to direct that. Yeah. And you've done some and and so there's all that stuff. But on top of that, there's actually a whole new world of, uh, of, of there's running your business as well, isn't there? On top of that. Yeah. So you've been doing a whole lot of work around that since we last spoke, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I am a bit of a dreamer. <laughs> and if you've got dreams and you want to make them to goals, you have to involve a lot of planning. So um, at the moment, I'm looking to ideally expand. I'm mm. looking to get bigger and um, have more impact in North London and Whangarei on with it. So I'm doing lots of research in terms of 
why people want to buy photographs, what it means to them personally, um, what are their fears in terms of apprehensions, why, why would they pause instead of moving forward and hiring a professional photographer, what sort of um, what hesitations do they have in that respect and it's opened my mind up to that common fear that everyone's um, a little the common fear of not having photos, of going through the process, of being emotionally involved with having a portrait taken and then not being happy with the photos at the end of the day. So is disappointment one of the biggest things stopping people? I think so, the fear yeah. of disappointment and that's um, that in the same breath as my biggest fear. I um, would hate to present someone photos that they didn't like of themselves. That's never happened, I hope it never does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but again, because you can't, you can't, you don't know what the finished product is until you've gone through the experience. Mm -hmm. It's not until you're sitting here looking at your images on the wall that you can actually say, yes, I love them, or no, I don't. So a lot of it is trust and getting out there and, and being known as an expert and sharing all this information with people so that they can start to trust enough that um, they'll come in and have the photo shoot and be open to that opportunity of having beautiful photos of themselves. Now people can trust you because I mean uh, a lot of people can look at a photo you've done and a photo someone else has done and they'll know which one's yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had some amazing comments lately of people who've said the exact same thing mm. where they've seen a couple of photos that me and other photographers have done and they've been able to pick the styles of each person um, without knowing Who's with who's, yeah, it was, yeah. which was really, really nice. It was really well. stand out. Oh, thank you. Mm. <laughs> I worked quite hard on that. Yeah, you, yeah. Well, you work quite hard full stop on everything. So you've been growing your business by understanding what it is that prevents um, your clientele from moving forward. Um, so how else is you, are you sort of planning to grow bigger? Are there other things that you're doing as I, well? I am... Um, so finding, out, finding out what's stopping people? Yep, yep. Um, I'm working heavily on workflow and systems within the business as well. So I never, um, I was never employed by another photographer. I've never been in a different studio. So a lot of this is completely new to me. Mm. Um, it's very hard to find employment in the photographic industry. It's very much a sole trader sort of situation. So many businesses out there are micro businesses. It's usually just a photographer and maybe an assistant or two. So I couldn't go out there and, or I didn't go out and find someone to learn off. A lot of the stuff, um, again, is researching online. Um, Googling for and finding workshops and workbooks and going through these things and looking at what other people have done internationally and seeing how that applies to my photography business. There's a particular newborn photographer who I'm following quite heavily at the moment and although that's a completely different genre of photography, her studio workflow and systems workbook that I purchased from her is just becoming a lifesaver so I'm about a quarter of the way through that and just implementing her basic templates but change them to fit my structure and so that when I can be in a position to hire um, employees or when I um, decide to expand that all these things are in place so that when the demand comes I can meet it without running around so, like headless truck. So you're growing the capacity of your business without, uh, but, but um, in a stable, yeah. um, so viable, just, sustainable way. Yeah, 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 I'm really trying to plan for scalability and um, Fingers crossed. <laughs> if if it could ever get to the point of being franchised, I mean that would be a fantastic thing. So. So that that's because it's not always easy, is it? So <laughs> what, what what keeps you going when it starts getting that? What keeps me going? Yeah. Because I know one of the the reason I ask is because, um, you know, we we train people to um, for pre-employment to get mm -hmm. employment ready, and I think if someone has never worked before in any capacity, I think academically they might have an idea of what being employment ready might be but it's in the head it's not yeah. until you actually start your first week of the job and you get to the third day and you go oh I'm working all the time you finally realize what what that means what work yeah. really means um, and um, I guess uh, I did have a I did have a reason why I was going down that line but it seems that uh, every time you sort of uh, make a new step there's something new to learn and you pick it up and run with it and keep going yeah yeah, yeah. so where do you see the business is going to take you 
What do I want the business yeah, to take me? Yeah, what do you want to um, Myself, as a business owner, I really got into it because I wanted a lifestyle business. I wanted something where I could earn a good amount of money doing something I really enjoyed, something that I was, I feel I'm good at. Mm. <laughs> um, and I could have downtime. I could take time out. Um, before I started doing photography or the part-time jobs I had while I was studying. I was always in tourism, retail and hospitality. So those are incredibly anti-social hours. Mm. You're pretty much working five till nine. You're not working nine to five. So to have mm. something during the day and to have um, a job or a business or hours where I was doing regular hours and having time off and having all that, so that ability to be social that I saw everyone else doing mm. when I was in my part-time work is what really drives me. Like mm. I want a nice lifestyle I want, the house I want and the place I want. Um, and both my parents were self-employed. Um, one successful, one not so much. So I learnt the good and bad side of it. And to start my own business, there wasn't that apprehension there because to me it was my normal. I mean, I'd worked for lots of other people, but I knew if I wanted to do it my way and I know I'm controlling in that respect I had to do it for myself mm. so it was sort of a a go out there and do anything you can to make it work yeah and I'm very grateful for the support I've had mm. um, but yeah I so where, where, where can you where does a person in business find support where can they go what can they do the Chamber of Commerce yep. I'm very grateful I'm very lucky to be next door to them mm -hmm. <laughs> so the one great Chamber of Commerce is here in the old library building um, and they're just a wealth of information as well as being um, as holding BA5 so business after five networking events um, if you need help they'll put you in touch with someone or they'll give you the answer um, I always believe in well I'm starting to believe in referral groups mm -hmm. um, I learned that the hard way because if you don't have a network if you don't build a network of people around you no one's going to find out about mm -hmm. you I mean Facebook is great but the internet is so hypothetical it's not real it's not tangible it doesn't give you that's results. interesting like like going out there and talking to people well um, yeah that's <laughs> interesting I, I, I did a I was experimenting with Facebook and I did a little promotion of a, of a post and and uh, it got, there was some stupid number of people that reached like 1806 people that reached to it that, that it wasn't reaching sort of you know a day before yesterday but it's made no difference to the business. It hasn't brought new business in. And so yeah. you're paying for all these um, uh, they don't, it hits his website. What are they call on Facebook? You, the likes you, or reach. Yeah, you're yeah, paying for all these reaches, and they're just numbers on a page, and that's it. It's not money in your pocket, is it? No, you, um, I'm finding you really have to work. If you're going to make social media work, you have to follow it up with offline stuff. Mm. That's, I mean, there's no point in getting numbers or likes just for likes sakes. Mm. It doesn't mean anything. Well, the thing that hit home was, I didn't spend very much money on it. It might have been like eight bucks. The thing that hit home was, yes, wonderful results, 1,800 um, contacts or whatever. Um, that was the results, and they wanted another eight eight bucks for another eighteen hundred. That would get me. Well, what did the first eighteen hundred get me? Pretty <laughs> <laughs> much. Yep. So yeah, so you really got to back it up. So it's a business is a people game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, and especially with mine in a business in a people service mm. business like that, it's very much working with people and going out and finding. Um, finding networks or colleagues or friends etc within those circles and I mean the most value I've got from going out into these networking events is meeting people like you oh, um, and, <laughs> and other others out there who have given me advice because um, I know one of my personal beliefs is that everything in life is learned mm -hmm. so if I don't know what I'm doing now it doesn't mean I can't learn it tomorrow it just mm -hmm. means I have to go out there and find someone to teach me or even if Google teaches me, if, if there's some way for me to figure out what that knowledge is and how to apply it for myself, then all I have to do is make a step to find the knowledge. It's not this big impossible thing that I can never do. So you set this huge, humongous goal. You wanted a lifestyle and the, <laughs> and the, and the, and the, and the time, <laughs> the time to uh, to socialise, and uh, and so you you learnt the photography, you learnt the lighting, then you had to learn the the modelling and the posing, then you had mm -hmm. to learn the direction, and now you. Um, you know, learning all the mechanisms to running a business, scaling it up, marketing. Um, whew, and the idea is you want to get that lifestyle and you'd love to maybe one day even franchise, you know, develop it so well that it's franchisable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm really good at, at dreaming. So that franchise thing is just an idea that 
in the future if it got to the point where I had it so down pat and the system structure was working really, really well. There's no reason why it can't go and get bigger and become a passive I can see income that. and further on yeah, I can into see investment that. terms. Yeah. So, all right. So what would you say to someone who is um, thinking, gee, maybe I'd like to do photography or maybe I'd like to start down the road that Sarah started yeah. on and towards success and... Um, and, and I'd like to study photography. What would you say to that, that person? How could you encourage them or, or uh, discourage them? I what would you say? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't discourage them. I would say photography is one of the e most easily accessible hobbies in today's um, technology-based digital camera um, generation. I would say in business terms, you need to learn business and you need to learn photography because you need to have good work that people were willing to pay for, but there are some of the best photographers in the world can't make money because they don't understand the business side of things. Right. So it's definitely two sides to the same, the same thing. You have to credit. be good at both to do really well. Um, but photography technically is very accessible. It's really easy in, well not e easy, easy, but I mean, if you had the passion to do it, you would it's keep going. It's like you were saying, the knowledge is there if you want to seek it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but don't forget the business side of things because that can be almost more important um, in terms of time-wise of learning that side of things, sort of things as well. Mm. Cool. And um, I wonder, did you have anything to add before we wrap up? I don't think so. It's all good? <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for coming on with us again, Sarah. You're it's welcome. been a pleasure. And I look forward to um, watching your journey go forward. Can't wait to see what's next. Yeah, definitely. So check out my website, surrealestudio.co.nz. That was the one. How can people engage with you <laughs> if they need to contact you? Plug. I knew I'd forgotten something. Plug, plug. Um, so yeah, the website, yep. surrealestudio.co.nz, Facebook forward slash surrealestudio. Um, we're also on Pinterest, so check out some of the images online. Um, and if you see some beautiful ladies around town, Ask them if they had photos by me. <laughs> some of them and if they haven't, send them in. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, all guys, beautiful guys. Yes, all beautiful guys, <laughs> for sure. Definitely. Cool. And um, yeah, stay tuned. There's big things coming. So. Cool. Thanks. You're welcome.